The large hailstorm on April 7th left some homeowners with some damage. We're going to learn a little bit about how to know whether that's you and what you can do about it. We've got the expert here. We've got Aaron Brookins and he's with Brookins Construction. Nice to see you out in the field today. Thanks, Justin. Nice to see you. So let's talk a little bit about hail. First of all, let's talk about what hail damage really is and then how do we as homeowners know if it's affected us? Great question. Um, most most homeowners don't, wouldn't uh, need to understand what hail damage is. So I'll do my best to give the viewers a little education. So shingles are made up of uh, three layers, really. The first layer is a fiberglass matting. That fiberglass matting is then coated with asphalt. And the final layer are granules. Now the granules serve a couple different purposes. Number one, they give us the ability to choose different colors for cosmetic reasons, curb appeal. But perhaps more importantly, uh, the, the granules are there to protect that asphalt matting from the sun and UV rays. So just like a, a old 10 or 15 year old blacktop driveway that's two and a half inches thick, the sun dries that out over time and then it begins to crack. So your homeowner might be thinking, well, I don't have any leaks right now. I can't see anything from the ground. My roof is probably fine, but the hail impacts it, knocks those granules free, exposing that asphalt matting, and it significantly decreases the lifetime of the shingle. So not something that's leaking right now, but two, three, four years down the road, it's leaking and you have problems. Well, most insurance companies only give you a year from the data loss, which again was April 7th, to identify that damage and initiate a claim. Well, and that is an interesting point. So you may have damage that you don't know about and it creeps up on you over a year's time and then it's too late. So if we want to have it checked and maybe we have questions about it, you know, it's tough, I think, for us to sometimes understand how to go about selecting the right contractor. What are your thoughts? Yeah. Uh, I agree, uh, especially in our industry. There's a lot of fly-by-night companies that'll that'll pop into town sometimes from all over the country after an event like this. And obviously, you know, I, I want our viewers to call me and have us uh, perform a free, uh, no obligation inspection. But the fact of the matter is, we're not we're not going to do them all, right? There's there's a lot of homes that are affected, and we just don't have the capacity to do all of them or even a small percentage of them. So if I educate the viewers on what to look out for, I highly recommend not signing any sort of a contingency agreement. A good uh, local contractor should be willing to perform a free inspection um, without any obligation. They should be willing to meet with the insurance adjuster, uh, making sure all the damage is accounted for uh, before ever asking for any commitment out of the homeowner. So watch out for contingency agreements. Uh, watch out for, for people uh, going door to door and asking you to sign away your claim before you know what insurance is paying for or any details as, as far as products, and warranties. And you really wanna know what you're getting before you sign off on that, giving that claim to somebody. Yeah, that's a good point. You know, it's a little bit scary because when you're not in the industry, you don't know necessarily about what company's been around and, and what hasn't. So asking the right questions sounds super important. We got a little bit over a minute left. And one of the questions I want to talk about before we head to break here is the process. Um, what, what is the process? Let's say we go through the insurance, the work is approved by insurance. Then what does the process look like? So the process after the insurance has approved the claim, um, what what our company does is we, we like to schedule a meeting to sit down and go over that, that estimate uh, that insurance has provided line item by line item, really help educate the, the homeowner on what those line items mean and, and then show them everything that we're willing to accomplish for them within that claim amount in regards to the products and uh, installation methods. There, there are all kinds of details I could probably bore you to death with on a roof, but we feel it's really important to make sure that we're on the same page as the homeowner as far as expectations uh, moving forward with the, with the completion of the work. Well, and of course, uh, as homeowners, we appreciate that. We want to know what's coming. And for those who may think they're in areas affected by hail damage from that storm, what should they do to get in touch with you and, and start a conversation? So, yeah, thank you. Um, to, to specify, the storm swath is pretty large. It, it goes from about a mile or two uh, east of Jackson 
all the way to uh, a couple miles west of Grafton. So that covers a really large area, uh, estimated about 10,000 homes perfected. Um, to get in, in touch with us, uh, feel free to give us give us a call at our, our business line, 414-255-0145. You can also reach us by uh, submitting a contact form on our website at brookins.com. Um, reach out to us on social media. Wow, really good to know. Thanks for sharing your tips, your advice. We appreciate it. We'll let you get back to work now. Thanks for being here, Aaron. Nice to see you. Thank you, Jessa. We'll be Bye. back with more Talk Wisconsin after the break, so stick around.